Hello and welcome to Little Learners. In today's video, as you will already know from the title, I am going to be reviewing this book, Max Einstein, The Genius Experiment, by James Patterson and Chris Grabenstein. Grabenstein. One of those two. And I was going to do this video much earlier, but as many of you will know who follow me on Facebook and Instagram, I was in hospital for a little while and that really threw off my entire videoing schedule. So better late than never, right? I mean, as Einstein said, time is relative. So it's all good. So yes, today I'm going to be reviewing this book and wow, do I have a lot to say about it. So this is the only book ever published to be approved and endorsed by the Albert Einstein archives, meaning the Albert Einstein archives were very happy with everything in here written about Einstein and all of the sciencey bits that I will get to in a moment. So this is a fiction book, it is a story, but it also incorporates lots about STEM skills, which are extremely prevalent in schooling at the moment, and I think will be for a very long time. For those of you who don't know, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. You can see on the front of the book straight away, our protagonist, Maxine Einstein, or Max for short, which actually she prefers. Now the great thing about this is that our protagonist is a girl, and I will tell you why this is a good thing. Max is a genius. She is no ordinary girl of 12 years old. She is an extremely clever scientist. Now when you ask children what a scientist looks like, and I know this for a fact because I ask my children every single year in my classes what they think a scientist looks like, about 95% of them will say that a scientist is a man in a white coat with crazy hair. Now I don't know for sure why this is the case, but I can hazard a few guesses. It's one of which is that in cartoons, anytime you see a scientist, they're usually a mad scientist, or have been up until now, and they are usually a man in a white coat with crazy hair. So it's really important that we make children aware that scientists are not only men, but also women, and not only adults, but can be children as well, which is what this book tells you throughout its entire storyline. Just a side note, if you ever want to really prove very quickly to your child that they can be a scientist, you just need to go into the kitchen and bake a cake with them because they put ingredients all together, mix them, put them in an oven, a chemical reaction happens and bam, you have a cake. Science. So our protagonist, Max, is a 12 year old girl who is an orphan who also has bouncy curly red hair. Now where have we seen that before? Now the great thing about Max is that she follows a teaching, I suppose, or a quote of Einstein's that I also really value, which is imagination is more important than knowledge. So without imagination and without thinking, spending time thinking, spending time imagining what you could do with the world and the resources that it has, we would never have these incredible inventions that we rely on so much. And Max really values that. She thinks that if her mind wanders, if she starts imagining, then she needs to follow her mind wherever it goes, because most wonderful ideas kind of happen by accident. There is a really interesting part of this novel where she is in a classroom and she starts daydreaming about something or other, some kind of sciencey thing, and the teacher is very cross with her and says that in his classroom, students must only learn how to answer questions on an exam, which is so relevant at the moment. It's something that many teachers and schools come up across and fall victim to, that they can't let their students really broaden their horizons and just use their imagination and follow their own train of thought and their own interests because of the pressures put on schools to get those grades in exams, which don't always work for all students. So I really liked that little bit in there and the fact that Max really values imagination. Max is also a very compassionate person. She cares about other people. And one of the big messages in this book is that no matter what you do to help the world, no matter what you invent, no matter 
what kind of creation you come up with as a scientist, you can't really help the world unless you care about the people who live in it. And Max really does, which is why she is such a special kind of genius, because not only can she think about the practical applications of her scientific inventions, discoveries or ideas, she also thinks about why we need those and how they are going to help other people. Now of course I don't want to give too many spoilers away of this book but I really do think that it is an excellent read for the children that it's aimed at which are 7 to 12. Of course during this book you do have to suspend your belief every so often in the sense that not everything in this book might be totally realistic and some things do happen quite quickly but that is the whole point of fiction and especially child fiction because you don't need everything to be realistic because we already live in the real world and we read books to get away from it. I think it's really special to use creative writing and fiction to really appeal to children and also then teach them about science within the story. It's kind of a way of getting the attention and appealing to children who don't normally like to learn about science or enjoy learning about science but don't enjoy sitting down with a non-fiction book or learning about science in the more stereotypical way. This is a way to really pique children's interest in science and help them to see that they can be a scientist too. Now of course the children in this book are geniuses. They are very unique because they are extremely clever. However, I think that that's a plus because it's showing children that the sky really is the limit for them and they can aspire to be whatever they want to be. Now of course in this story as well as the science there is also a fantastic storyline about Max, her journey and some trouble that she gets into, the people she meets along the way and how her smarts help her to get out of trouble. Speaking about the science in this book, there are aspects that are dropped in every now and again and for the most part it's done pretty seamlessly. It's just through Max's own thoughts or the way that she reacts to certain situations, she takes science into account. And it's done so well that there was one part that I really enjoyed. Now as a 26 year old having been through all of my formal education I do not remember learning about the theory of relativity ever and that is interesting because of what I was talking about earlier. Often in school you learn about what will get you to pass the test and I don't remember the theory of relativity ever being on any test I took so I don't think I really learned about it but it is so interesting and in this book scientific concepts are explained so well. So for example, there's one where Max is on a train traveling 30 miles an hour in one direction. There is a fly on the train traveling about five miles per hour in the opposite direction. So she's saying, is the fly traveling at five miles per hour? Because when you're on the train and you are traveling the same speed as the train, the fly looks like it's flying five miles per hour. But if you are standing on the platform, the train is traveling 30 miles per hour, but then the fly is traveling five miles per hour the other way. So is the fly traveling 25 miles per hour or 30 miles per hour? It's all relative. It depends on your perspective and it is explained so well. On that note, there are often some illustrations in this book that explain some of the scientific theories and concepts that are put across in the book and also just some of kind of Max's inner monologue and inner thoughts such as this one. Another great thing about this book is that the chapters are very short and I always think that that is a good thing to do in a child's book because first of all it breaks it up into lots of little pieces, easier to understand, but it also helps children feel that they have really achieved something by reading so many chapters of a book. So it doesn't take long to read five chapters of a book and then you feel like you've really accomplished something. How many chapters does this actually have? 70! Could you imagine being a seven-year-old and just saying yeah I read 70 chapters last week. So that is my review of Max Einstein, The Genius Experiment. The end of the book does lean towards there being a sequel and I can tell you for a fact that there will be a sequel in October of 2019. So you better get reading it so that you can read the second one when it comes out next year. Apologies for the weird shadows going on at the moment. Uh, I'm having a bit of a lighting problem in the sense that I don't have any, so I am just dealing with my ceiling light at the moment, which looks pretty but doesn't really work very well for 
lighting a YouTube video. So you know, if anyone wants to send me some free lighting, I would appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below if you are going to read this, if you are going to buy it for your child, or if your child is already reading it or has already read it. What did you think of it? I'd really like to know. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up as it really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos just like this one. If you have already hit the subscribe button, please also hit the bell icon so you get a notification every time I post a new video because we all know that YouTube isn't very good at doing that all on its own. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.